This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. All right, we have a service call on a kitchen AC not working properly today. So um, they said that their office, which is controlled by the kitchen AC, is extremely hot. Holy moly, does that compressor sound bad. That's so loud. So uh, we're gonna have to dive into this unit and try to figure out what's going on with it and what we can do to get it fixed. So we have an extremely noisy compressor. The second stage compressor is disconnected and the plug is taped off and that is my style, so I might have done that. Let me turn this guy off. All right. So this guy, we have a first stage compressor that's extremely noisy. We have a second stage compressor that is taped off, and this is totally my style to tape it like this, so I might have done this. Third stage is still hooked up. Uh, condenser itself is kind of dirty. Okay. Um, so from the looks of it, this stuff happens. Let's see the inside. Oh yeah, this guy's really dirty in here too. So from the looks of it, we condemned a compressor on this unit. Again, I'll have to go through history in our system. Um, and maybe the customer didn't approve the quote or something yet. We'll have to look and see. Uh, so we're gonna start by cleaning up the unit because uh, we know the condenser needs to be clean. So we're gonna pull the panels, clean the unit up. We'll clean their other units too. And then we'll get onto the diagnosis. Uh, from the sounds of it, I don't think this is running backwards, but we'll double check that. But if, uh, yeah, because the wiring coloring's the same as all the other ones, everything looks good there. So I think we have a second compressor on the way out. We'll double check the diagnosis on this compressor, and then we'll see if this one works at all. And uh, test all the condenser fan motors to see if there's anything we can do to get this running. I did go through my service history, and we condemned this compressor back in March of 2021. So this year, it's now uh, July of 2021. So we're just confirming diagnosis. It was not me that condemned it, but one of my techs just did it the way that I like it. So we're testing continuity to ground, nothing on that leg. And we have continuity on this leg. And then let's test the other leg. Yeah, so we have a grounded compressor. So definitely bad compressor, um, but we still need to go through the rest of the unit. Now, uh, the complaint is, is that it was working kind of okay, but then now all of a sudden it's just really gone downhill. So some obvious things, that compressor is really loud, it might be inefficient, we'll test that out. But the condenser being dirty is a huge thing. So we're gonna clean that condenser first, like I said, and then we'll finish going through everything. Understanding how your, your restaurants or your buildings operate is so important, all right? This particular restaurant uses the air conditioning units for the air balance. There's no makeup air, okay? No makeup, no dedicated makeup air unit. They pull makeup air from every AC. It's imperative that the outside air filters be clean for proper operation of this setup. And these filters are plugged solid, and that's why they're plugged, is because they're pulling so much air through these things. So that will affect the performance of the building significantly, because if your building has a negative air balance, that means the exhaust fans are pulling out more air then you're putting back into the building. And uh, it'll make it really hard to open the outside doors. Um, the customers will struggle. And when they do get the outside doors open, all the makeup air is gonna come in through that door now. So you're gonna get a rush of really hot air or really cold air depending on the climate. So it's so important to make sure you understand how these buildings work. And when you're doing coil cleanings and things like that, you clean the makeup air unit, I mean the uh, outside air filters if necessary. Our first step is gonna be just to pre-rinse the big stuff off the condenser, get it nice and wet, inside and out, then we'll apply cleaner and start cleaning everything. So these inside ones a little difficult, but we just kinda get in there as best as possible, get the big stuff off, and then like I said, we'll get the cleaner on there. And then while we're cleaning, we got two people here today, so while we're cleaning, um, I'm going around and I'm gonna start checking the belts. Uh, I went ahead and pulled the panels off of every unit. We're doing this teamwork style, okay? So one person's not doing all the work. We're trying to be as efficient as possible because we wanna be able to bill for everybody's time. So we can't be standing around, you know what I'm saying? Kitchen AC units belt pretty darn good. 
pretty happy with that don't see any major problems blower wheels really really dirty that's definitely a an issue um, let's check these filters see how bad they are filters are pretty dirty but I mean the unit itself is pretty dirty inside too but I mean I don't think they have to be changed I think they'll be okay while we're rinsing this AC I'm kind of looking around and I think I might have found a problem look right in here that's all oil it's refrigeration oil and I'm almost positive that is the third stage we follow this guy back that's this liquid line going there going up there yeah that's the third stage compressor right there so that sucks big old fat leak right there well we're gonna keep going with the cleaning we lucked out and that the water that we supply have supplied here is hot so it's helping to clean this thing but you can see what's coming out is just pure mud coming out of this guy this is our final rinse on this guy, so we've done a couple rinses. This is going to be the worst one over here, this side, because it, it's kind of in sides is what happens. So I'm getting ready to profile and set up measure quick. We're going to do it for a two stage because we know the third stage has a bad compressor, but I can hear this vibrating and feel it, and it's this blower motor. It's weird. I think the blower motor is going bad too. It's coming and going. Every once in a while you get this high resonance vibrating see it's not doing it now when I open this panel it goes away it's very interesting and I put this on I will say this building's air balance is really out of whack so it could be putting extra strain on the motor or something but strange all right well we got this unit back together um, we're going to uh, probe up and then see what's going on I was looking into where that oil was and it actually might be the second stage which well, we'll see. That, that might be a good sign, but we'll see. So this uh, first stage compressor is vibrating so bad, but it's pumping, so I might try to put some oil in it, but we're definitely looking low. But it's vibrating so bad, the, the refrigeration probes keep coming off. All of them. Both of them are really loud, though. So first stage is running low pressures high and low high suction line temp high superheat low subcooling first stage looks low on gas to me second stage just looks like it might be running a little low on the suction pressure subcooling's low superheats high both of them might be ever so slightly low on charge. Um, but we also gotta pay attention to condenser fan motors. Only two of them are running. We need to get those other two running to make sure that we have a thing. And I just rubbed refrigeration oil all over my eye. My eye itched and I did. So number one, that first compressor is really loud. What I'm gonna try to do is go get some oil and we're gonna put some oil in through the suction side and see if we can get some oil in that compressor and see if it quiets it down just a little bit. Um, and then we're gonna to top off the charge too. So I step back from the unit and I tripped over something. And I look over here, this is something sticking up through the roof. Someone drilled something through the roof and it vibrated up. It's, I can, when I push on it, I can feel something moving. And <laughs> that's been drilled up from the other side. What the heck is that? That's weird. They can have a water leak there. So I was curious about something on the first stage. So this is my liquid line temp coming out of the dryer, 90 degrees, okay? And then we're gonna switch it to this side right here. Make sure it's got a good connection. It does. We've got a plugged up liquid line filter dryer on the first stage. So, this guy, and it sounds like it's low on oil or something, but it could just be that the dryer's plugged up and that oil might be stuck. Ah, questions, questions, what do we do here? Because I talked to the customer, and the customer said that they're replacing this unit, but we need it running, so. Huh. All right, there's something major going on with the 
third stage too because look at that head pressure it's insane right now yeah something's funky there um but again i don't know what the heck is going on with measure quick there's like a see it's like coming and going it's weird um i checked the the filter dryer it, it has like a two to three degree temperature drop across the dryer which i'm not in love with so we might change that dryer too i did talk to the customer and like i said they're getting a new unit but um they're so far behind at linux that they're they're having to build them because they're out of stock and they said it's not going to be built and delivered until october so we got to do what we got to do to get this unit operational we're not going to change the compressor but we're probably going to get the first and second stage running so we're going to go ahead and uh kill the power to the first stage i'll recover the gas out of that one leave the third stage running and then we'll flip flop and everything and change the dryers and see if we can't get these things at least somewhat running i can't stress enough how important it is to purge your gauges okay i'm going to be reusing this refrigerant so we can't be having it contaminated with air so i purge my gauges up to here this is open these are open all i need to do is open this to recover and i left this loose so that way it can purge there we go now it's purging and we've gotten all the air out of the lines or as best as we can so important all right we got done recovering the gas i gotta say there was a lot of refrigerant in there so um i hooked up the nitrogen tank we're purging with nitrogen through the low side we're going to get in here we're going to uh change this dryer real quick once we get the dryer changed we'll get the vacuum pump running and then hopefully get that first stage back up and running i sent someone to go get me another dryer and some oil just in case we got to add oil but it could just be that the oil's logged in the evaporator too so we don't want we got to be careful about adding oil all right we're going in with an oversized dryer we're putting in a 16 cubic inch what was in there was an 8 cubic inch and actually what was in there was oversized too because what comes from the factory is a 5 cubic inch uh, you will have to adjust the charge accordingly, but it's not that big of a deal. So um, here's the old dryer. I got to say it's rather heavy, so I imagine it's restricted pretty well with whatever's in there. Probably the compressor oil breaking down or something. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to sweat this guy in real quick. Then we'll make sure we get a long screw to secure that guy. But I really like using the Sporlin catch-all dryers. Um, never really had a problem with them. Uh, whenever possible, I try to go oversized. Got the vacuum pump running. Uh, we're doing a three hose pull right now to try to pull the system down as fast as possible. I've got the gas ballast open, but something I'm a little bit concerned about is the oil. Now, is the compressor low on oil? I don't know. The sound that it was making was making me think it needed oil, but I don't know if that's the case. In situations with restrictions, you can have oil get stuck in the system in different places. So these are all things I need to pay attention to. Um, we may end up sucking oil out of the lines. I don't know. It's hard to get it out of the compressor, but if it's stuck in the system, the, the vacuum will pull it out of the lines. So something we got to keep an eye on. We'll watch the oil level on the, this guy. We did a good vacuum. Everything looked good on that. So we're about to weigh in the charge. Um, we're going to open up the high side. I've zeroed out the weight on here. I'm using the field piece wireless scale. It takes 11 pounds, 8 ounces. We're putting it in through the high side. And my micron gauge is still reading some weird lower levels, but it's good. We're going to go ahead and take it off now because it's in positive pressure. And yeah, 11 pounds, 8 ounces is what we're looking for. So we're going to get that into there and then uh, hopefully start this guy up. Pull a good vacuum. It pulls all the refrigerant in. We overshot it just a little bit. It says 11 pounds, 12 ounces, but it should be good because we have that bigger dryer on there. So uh, yeah, everything's good on this guy. We're closed off, ready to start this up. I disconnected the third stage. So once we get this running, we can recover from the third stage now. So we want to watch out when it does start up. If that oil is in the system, I don't know if it's going to come back or what. Gotta be careful. Probably going to go ahead and put this guy into test mode so that way it just starts right up. Unit test. And then I'll just go C10, that should be first stage. Still loud as hell, but we're gonna give it some time to run and see what happens. Here comes the 
Look at the pressure coming back up. It started really low. 75 PSI, 76, because it's under a heavy load right now, so. I'm surprised it's coming that high because I thought the pressure, they usually have pressure limiting expansion valves on them. 88 PSI. Notice that it's quieting down though. It's definitely quieting down. So we're gonna give it some time, let it run, and uh, check to make sure all our fan motors are running too. I probably should have just done the full call for cool. I don't know if that turns on all the fans or not because the head pressure is kind of high. I just manually turned on the other fans by jumping the wires over temporarily on the relays and my head pressure is dropping, so that's good. Compressor's sounding a lot better, but we're gonna let it run for a while and hope that if there is oil trapped, it comes back. And like I said, um, we'll get recovering on that third compressor. Look at this. So it ran for a few minutes. I have temperature clamps across that dryer. 103 on the inlet, 66 on the outlet. The dryer is already plugged up again. I wonder if it's oil. I wonder if the dryer's getting saturated with oil. What the heck is going on here, man? Or is it just really that severely contaminated? So, uh, it's getting really hot outside. Granted, this is just R22, but my tank pressure started climbing. So, I'm gonna run water across the tank, and you see it's dropping now, 420, 419. Remember, this is the discharge, this is the outlet, so. We're gonna keep some running water across the tank. That'll help us to be able to recover faster. We're gonna to have to figure something out here, put a bigger dryer and maybe some ball valves or something. It's really interesting. I'm kind of scared. Like what is plugging up this system? So I disconnected the condenser. I recovered the gas, obviously. New dryers right there. Disconnected the condenser, blow out of here and no oil's coming out. So what the heck is plugging up this dryer? don't get it it's very interesting yeah not even any oil or anything is coming out it's coming out just fine nothing blowing right into the liquid well you know going into the condenser this is the liquid drain but yeah I mean it's flowing through just fine very interesting I'm really intrigued by what is plugging up this dryer because I for sure thought I was gonna have oil stuck in the condenser but that's not the case it wasn't there I mean the the condenser was clear and whatever is restricting it had to be in the condenser it's very interesting because it would have clogged up the metering device if it was running through the liquid line you know what I'm saying so and the metering device was still letting refrigerant through just fine I mean, you know, not as good as it should be. It's very interesting. Okay, well, um, while I'm waiting, I'm waiting for my guy to get back with some ball valves and a dryer. Um, I'm recovering from the third stage because I want to see if the refrigerant charge is accurate. So we're doing that real quick. And then uh, I sweat this guy back together. This guy's back together. And then uh, we're just going to build. What we're going to end up doing is a flare dryer. I got a 30 cubic inch, a giant one. We're gonna end up building something. We gotta secure it carefully to this, and I'm gonna put ball valves on it. Ball valve here, ball valve here, so that way if it plugs up again, we can change it. This is nuts, I've never had to do this before, but we put a ball valve here, we put the pressure port on the inside, put a flare dryer, ball valve here, pressure port here. So if we ever have to change this dryer again, we don't have to recover the whole charge. We just valve it off, recover what's there, and then you can evacuate it. So that's that. At the same time, I recovered the gas from the other stage, and it wasn't overcharged which it was running high head pressure it like literally has 10 pounds nine ounces so it's supposed to have 11 8. Ugh, this thing is pissing me off man so i think we're going to change that dryer too since we have it open just because i don't know what's going on here we'll probably put in a flare there too got the evacuation running on the first stage we're at about 479 microns um, we just finished changing the dryer. I went ahead and put a new dryer on the third stage too because I just don't know what's going on with the system. Um, and I was running high head pressure, but we were undercharged. So just changed it real quick. Don't know what's going on there. 
because um, we had to pull the refrigerant out anyways. Put ball valves on, went ahead and went with the flare valve too. We'll secure that guy. Got this guy secured, it's not going anywhere. We'll secure this one real quick and then uh, we'll get this cover on. We still got to uh, tighten up the flares and then uh, get the evacuation running on this stage too. All right, this guy's still evacuating. It's at about 668 microns. This guy's running, it's charged. Pressures are looking good, but I'm gonna try to put a couple squirts of oil in there to see if it helps. I've already primed the pump, so we're just gonna slowly add it. Very carefully. We don't wanna to put too much oil in there because we don't even know if it's low, but it just sounds like crap, you know? So we're just going to put a couple squirts in there. It's, it's quieted down a little bit. We're going to give it a few minutes, see if it'll suck in what I put in and go from there. All right, so first stage is looking really good. The compressor's not really quieting down too much, but pressures are looking good. Superheat sub coins about where it should be. Yeah, I'm not gonna put any more gas in it. This, I don't doubt that that compressor is inefficient and there's issues with it. Um, temp split's not great, but it's gonna take time. I just turned this on and we don't have that other one running yet. So um, we're gonna go ahead and probe up on the other one and see how that does. All right, so the, the third stage compressor, the only other one that's working, is looking really good. The numbers are on point. Um, I'm a happy camper. Of course, the unit doesn't have the greatest temperature split right now because it needs that third compressor to really help it out. And the airflow is out of whack too. But this guy is kicking butt, doing everything it can. We're gonna talk to them, see if they want us to change that middle compressor temporarily. I don't know. They gotta wait all the way till October, so that's a long time with a warm kitchen. But, all right, well, we're going to uh, wrap this one up. The dryers are all secured inside there nice and good. I've done everything I can. We also cleaned every other AC, checked the belts on every other AC. So we've done everything we can. We're gonna start getting this giant mess we got up here. We've already been taking some things down, so. All right, I got done just uh, cutting these dryers up. I was curious what was going on here. And it's just contamination. So this is the first dryer that went bad, okay? This is the inlet. And this is the outlet but look at look at look at this it's just plugged with with gunk and this thing is just disintegrated so that's the first dryer and then this is the second one that we put in again here's the inlet here's the outlet and it's just caked at this I mean look at the mesh it's just caked so we're gonna call this is just lack of preventative maintenance for so long that oil in the system is cooked and this unit's just dying a slow death basically um, there's not a whole lot we can do about it other than I mean I put in that giant oversized dryer so you know it's working um, I didn't bother cutting open the uh, the third stage dryer because this is one of the Emerson ones and it has all those little beads and they just go everywhere. This is a solid desiccant. Um, it's nice and easy. And to cut them open, I just used, I have a bandsaw and I've got this jig for it. It's called a Portaband Pro. And uh, you can pop this gas shock off and you can set it up as a chop saw. Uh, there's actually a table that'll come up and set on here. And then you can basically hinge the, the bottom down so you can cut things up, do whatever you want, but it's just a giant bandsaw. So yeah, just uh, lack of preventative maintenance. You know, This is what happens when you run dirty condensers for years. You run dirty condensers for years, you start cooking the oil, the compressor temperature gets above 225, you know, 12 inches away from it, which the internal temperature is well above 225, but Copeland recommends no more than 225 couple inches like what 12 inches away from the compressor or something like that um, but basically my guess is they're just cooking the oil you know this isn't we're not contaminating the system I'm the only person that ever works on that 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 setup so you know it's just it's it's dirty in that system it's just caked in there
All right, you clearly saw how plugged up those dryers were. And again, it's just people not doing proper preventative maintenance and it beats these units up, you know, running dirty condensers all the time causes the unit to have really high condensing temperatures all the time, which causes it eventually to overheat the oil. Um, and it's just, you know, and then dirty air filters, dirty outside air filters, you know, just lack of routine maintenance. So, um, you know, we started out as a normal service call and I went through the system because, uh, that everything was dirty, you know, and when you have these customers that don't do routine maintenance, um, you kind of have to start that way. So we had to spend a good three hours cleaning everything. And I will say too, um, we didn't clean the, uh, third stage condenser enough. That's why we were running really high head pressure. Once I, uh, changed the dryer on it and started it back up and weighed in the charge, we were still running the higher head pressure. So I per, uh, personally went and checked that condenser and the water wasn't flowing properly through it. So I was talking to my apprentice and we both went through it together. It was a good teaching moment, you know, that, you know, you got to see the, the water flowing through there just because the surface is clean. So uh, went through there and really, really got in there and cleaned that thing, got plenty of chemical on it, broke everything down, cleared it out. And then you guys saw the end result where the, the third stage was running really good. I kind of went back and forth in the video calling the third stage the second stage. Um, that was just because I was treating it as a two stage uh, when I was setting up measure quick because we didn't have the third compressor running. So they, it was, yeah, anyways, that was it. But so when it comes to these calls, you know, I have to start them, you know, and clean, spend hours cleaning before I can even diagnose. And this is the frustrating thing that kind of happens with customers that don't do preventative maintenance because... You know, you, you can't just go out and change a contactor anymore. It's, you go out there and the unit's so filthy that you can't even give them an accurate diagnosis until you clean it. And then once you spend hours cleaning it, then you can come in and say, oh, yeah, it needs all this work, you know. And we're seeing this more and more um, with several of the customers, especially after the last year of the craziness going on with, you know, everything. And, uh, you know, nobody was doing routine maintenances and stuff because they didn't have the money. Everybody was afraid. They didn't know what was going to happen. So... I mean, it is what it is, you know, but um, I'm still in talks with the customer to see if they want us to change that other compressor because, again, having to wait till October with just two of these things, I mean, they really need that 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 second compressor running or that third compressor, whatever you want to call it, um, running on this thing. So we're still kind of trying to see what they want to do. But for now, they've got some crazy oversized dryers with some ball valves, which is a little unconventional. Um, but, you know, I wanted to go in there with a, a flare dryer because I don't want to have to keep unsweating that compressor or unsweating that dryer. So it is what it is. You know, I, I'm not a huge fan of putting flare dryers on these package units that have a lot of vibrations in them because over time they are going to have leaks at the flare nuts and stuff. But you can only do what you can do. You know, it is what it is. So. Hey, I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. Uh, if you haven't already, do me a favor, guys, and check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. Uh, these hats are available, shirts, beanies, sweaters, all that good stuff. Uh, just a great way to help support the channel if you guys are interested. Um, the easiest way, though, to support the channel, the super easiest way, doesn't cost you a single thing, is watch the beginning or watch the videos from beginning to end without skipping through anything. Seriously, that's the easiest way, okay? Um, other ways that you can help to support the channel uh, via Patreon, via PayPal, uh, via YouTube channel memberships. It's all in the show notes of this video. Um, remember, I try to go live uh, on Monday evenings about 5 p.m. Pacific on YouTube. Lately, it hasn't been working out because I've been so busy at work. In fact, this service call was the reason why I didn't do my Monday night live stream um, let's see, today's the 21st. So that would have been on July 19th was because of this video. I was stuck at this restaurant until like 4:30 or something like that. So I didn't get home for another hour and a half after that. So anyways, it is what it is. Okay. Remember, I also go live uh, with my buddies on Friday evenings, again, work permitting on the HVAC overtime YouTube channel, where we just kind of recap the week and kind of hang out and talk. So check that out too. There's links in the show notes to everything. And uh, yeah, I really, really appreciate you guys and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Okay.